You are listening to the Thinking Effect podcast with Orshel Green and Lillianne Kriegler. Hello, you're back again with Orshel and Lillianne on the Thinking Effect podcast. This is episode 18. How can teachers teach algebra through play? Now, our previous episode, 17, was about how we can use play for learning. So if you missed that, go back and just have a listen. And in the meantime, let's say hello to Ortel. Hi, Lillian. I'm so excited about this episode because, you know, I think many people don't associate learning algebra with play. So I'm really excited to share all that with our listeners. Yes, I would have been at school the very last person to associate algebra with play. I always just associated <laughs> algebra with total with and pain. confusion. <laughs> but, you know, algebra contains so many crucial um, foundational concepts. So, you know, if you're an early childhood teacher scratching your head thinking, what has algebra got to do with me? The older teacher, you know, teachers of older children will understand this. It, you know, everything about number, everything about equivalence what is equal to something else everything about I'm going to use a symbol to represent something and everything about sequencing things in the right order that is the foundation of algebra so those little mini tasks those things I've mentioned are really important for algebra and you know what they're in your basket no matter how young your students are, because every child can look at something and say, yes, this is the same, this is different, this is equal, this is not. And, um, you know, so it starts very early. Absolutely, it starts very early. And, and you know, in the last episode, um, we spoke about building towers. And I see learning math like building a tower, right? And you have to make sure the foundation are well-built, wide and strong if you want children to succeed on their math journey because um, without this strong foundation when you get to the more complex um, operator to the more complex math if children don't, don't have the basic rights they just topple over and and oftentimes we see children get lost on their math journey and we see adults lost as well sometimes uh, with the math journey because sometimes along the way they didn't properly understood uh, basic concepts within algebra and therefore um, they lost the way and and they couldn't build on their math knowledge and so this is why it's so important to pay attention to helping students develop a good foundation in math in algebra so they can build a strong tower on it with a good knowledge in math. Yes, I think um, that is so true because, you know, very early on, maths becomes quite an abstract thing. So, you know, you write the number three and it means something. And you write, um, say, for instance, you know, those lovely crocodile mouths, the lesser than and greater than, unless the students really understand what that is, they're not going to be able to use it. So the language, um, the symbols, all of that becomes quite obscure, quite early, if children aren't playing with those ideas and using them more. So, you know, they could be doing the greater and lesser sign um, out in the playground, um, you know, where you put yourself in different groups and then someone will stand in the middle between those groups and decide um, what it is. And, you know, you can do it like a scramble. It's like one, two, three, you know, run whichever way. Um, it'll be chaotic and divine, but then you make that decision. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so important also to develop children confidence in their math capabilities um, not only because it's such an important skill for life, for example, you know, for financial planning, uh, later on in life, we really need to use math in order to uh, plan our life or even compare prices in the supermarket or wherever we go. But not only that, but because if a child thinks that they're not good at math, or maybe someone will also tell them, oh, you're stupid, you don't know how to do this equation, then they might label themselves as, as not good enough, as stupid. I, I don't know anything. And then they grow up with this damaging self-image that they carry throughout all their lives. 
Yes. And so the playing with it makes it much more accessible, um, you know, and they're using those ideas in a playful way. And then you can explain afterwards, rather explain afterwards what the mathematical principle was. And I know you, you know, your sons um, are at school doing algebra. My, my, um, my children are much older and, you know, doing completely different things, but they've all used maths every day, you know, yes. every single day. So it's really crucial. And that playing with the ideas um, is, is a good way of establishing um, what they mean. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right, because otherwise it stay really abstract and you don't really understand what it means and why you do that. When you expand in brackets, for example, why you do it in that way? What does it mean? So let's talk about how you can um, teach other algebra through play. Let's get to the fun part. <laughs> so when you use um, a game to teach math, you need to think about the rules, the goals and uh, competition. And why we want to include that? We want to have rules and goals because that makes it really clear to your students uh, in terms of what they need to do, um, what are the rules of the game. And, uh, and the competition bit is to make it more fun and challenging. And they don't necessarily have to compete with other students. They can compete um, against themselves, for example. Um, there are many games that naturally help um, in teaching math like Monopoly, but you can take many other games and by tweaking them a little bit, you can turn them into games that teach algebra. And I'm gonna use in this example, the game, uh, the board game, uh, Snakes and Ladders, which I hope many people understand what it is. Here in Australia, it's broadly used. <laughs> So, I loved snakes and ladders as a child. Even when we went holidaying in a caravan, my parents would pack that compendium of games because they were so great for these skills. So you go ahead on snakes and ladders. I love it. Yeah, let's do it. So if you know, if you're familiar with the game snakes and ladders, and if you're not, then Google and, and look it up, then uh, you need to throw a die in order to know how many steps you need to walk on the board. So instead of using a die, uh, you as a teacher, you can prepare cards with different math expression, algebra, algebra expressions on the cards. So let's say one card can be uh, five minus three. Another card might be um, three times and then it's in bracket three minus one. So you prepare these cards where on each card there is a different um, um, mathematical expression. And then each time a student need to pick up a card and then walk the steps based on that mathematical um, expression. And so, for example, if a student picked up a card which says five minus three, so then what does it mean on the board actually? What does it mean? It means that the child need to uh, go ahead five steps. And then because it's minus three, they need to return back three steps. And then you can ask them, so what does it mean five minus three? How many steps did you take um, eventually? Uh, and, and so it makes it more concrete. So the expression of five minus three kind of comes to life in the game and helps them understand what it means uh, in actual fact. And then another child might pick up a card that says three times and then is in bracket three minus one. So here is an opportunity to talk about the order, the sequence of operation, how you, do you go about it? So you start with the numbers in the bracket. And again, what is three minus one? What does it mean? It means you go three steps ahead and then return one step back. And, and then you have the three times. So it means that actually what happened in the bracket of three minus one, you need to repeat that three times. And so it helps in making math more real and, and um, you bring it to life. So it's not an abstract thing anymore. And it's easier to learn what it means, for example, about the sequence of operator, how you go about it, when you turn it into a play where the children actually need to move uh, things along the board as per this math, math expression. I would so put my hand up to have you as my math teacher. <laughs> also, <laughs> um, Yeah, I just, I, I think there's so much benefit to the children seeing those things 
and using it so that they understand it. Because I mean, negative numbers is very, you know, quite an abstract thing for children if you just do it. So the one, you know, if you just introduce negative numbers, it's quite a thing to wrap your head around. But if they see it as, oh, I'm going forward and I'm going backward and I'm using this many steps and that many, makes it so much easier. And I love that you're offering these expressions, um, you know, in, in, in just one expression at a time, because I think teachers regularly would go to where they offer a combination of expressions on one side of a, a, an equal sign and a combination of expressions that you're expected to do on the other side. And, you know, the children get lost, A, in the, just the complexity of what they're being presented with, but, um, and also the not understanding the sequence. So there's just too much happening there, too many symbols, too many numbers, too many brackets, um, and, and then they get lost along the way. So this is beautiful how you're building up both understanding, you know, what the symbol is, whether it's a number or whether it's a, an alphabetic thing representing something. They understand that first and they under, understand it simply and sequentially. And then you can bombard them with complexity. So the beautiful, I mean, Professor Ruben Feuerstein wrote his whole thinking program and it was based on um, going from simple to complex, going from the known to the unknown, you know, and going from the concrete to the abstract. So you're doing all of those things in these beautiful examples on snakes and ladders. I love yeah, it. and, and it's all fun. <laughs> it's so fun for the children right they love playing games um and so it's a fun and engaging way to learn math and then also you know maybe they'll see math differently they'll see math as a fun thing to do and, and not have that perception that many children develop sometimes along the way that math is just a horrible thing that they don't want anything to do with <laughs> that's true i mean joe bola who's very very well known uh, writes about this and the, she says never say that maths is hard, never. And especially to, to girls, you know, don't say, oh, don't worry, you know, you can always be a something else with the expectation that women are not gonna step up in the world of science, physics, and mathematics. Doing, doing so much of the population a huge disfavor if you're saying those things. So yeah, always, you know, even if you found it um, difficult at school yourself. I mean, I'm talking now with parents and all, a lot of teachers of most of us are parents, you know, don't give your child this expectation that it's going to be hard. So present it in this beautiful, fun way so that they can think, oh yeah, of course, this is something that I do. This is so easy. This is easy. This is simple. This is fun. That's how Absolutely. we want it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So would you like to summarize today, Ortil, <laughs> or shall I go for it? <laughs> uh, sure, I can summarize. You, go, you so, do a summary on algebra. Yeah, of course. So learning algebra through play. So what is it? Basically, we want to help students build a strong mathematical knowledge, and we need to make sure the foundation are strong and wide. And this is why we need to pay attention right from the start. Before we get to the very complex math, we need to make sure they understand the concept uh, properly and it doesn't stay like an abstract concept that don't really relate to the real world. And so why, why it is so important? It's important, A, because math is important and we use it every day uh, in our life and it's important for us to be able to um, create a, a better financial future, you know, understand our financial situation, etc. But also because of the self-image. I see often children and adults as well with that think, oh my God, I'm not, stu I'm stupid. I um, don't know math. And they have a self image because they lost the way somewhere along their math journey. And so by incorporating play into, the, into your math teaching, you helping them firstly understand math uh, in a very real way, but also you helping them with a self image. And how you do it? So we gave an example of snakes and ladder, but you can take other games and tweak them a little bit to turn them into a fun game that uh, teaches uh, math in a very concrete and real way. 
Excellent. I love your summary. Um, <laughs> and definitely I'm joining your maths program. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that would be All fantastic. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, we are going to meet you again next week in episode uh, 19, which is all about how can teachers use movement to enhance thinking? So that will be another fun way to learn and grow in your classroom. That's right. And I think um, we'll leave it at that description. But wait, because wait with some anticipation for that one. And we look forward to seeing you in episode 19. See you then.